All right, welcome to Mobile Car Mechanic. Today we're working on a 2016 Honda Accord Sport. We're going to be replacing the transmission fluid filter. We were supposed to do it last time when we did the transmission fluid, but we didn't have the parts on hand just because they were out of stock in Honda. But now that we have finally have it, we're going to go ahead and knock that out. If you need help with changing the transmission fluid, we also have a video on that for you. All right, so these are the tools that we're going to need for a job. We're going to need a ratchet, 12 millimeter long and short sockets, 10 millimeter, some various extensions, some picks to help hook the old O-rings off the cooler and the oil filter, and then the various gaskets as well as the filter, some brake clean and some paper towels. All right, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery because we actually have to remove it to make space to get to the actual oil cooler for the transmission fluid. All right, now we're going to go ahead and remove the bolts that hold the clamp. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and pull out the battery. Let's pull the little cover off. Pull the battery up. All right, once we've removed the battery, there's just one last tray on top of the tray. It's a little plastic cover, just pull that out. Now we need to go ahead and remove these five bolts up at the top. This 10 millimeter, this 10 millimeter, this 10 millimeter, and two 12s. And then there's going to be a couple of 12s under the battery tray that we'll get to after this. Twelve millimeter bolts. Okay, we got the top bolts out. The bottom ones are going to be very difficult to see. You don't have to take them all the way out. You just need to loosen them up because the tray has slits in it where it can allow you to slide it up. So what we're going to go ahead and attempt is to get under the tray now. All right, so this is going to be the challenging part because you're going to kind of go in blind. But there is a wire harness in the way. There is going to be a little tab that you can pull on to pull this guy out. So we're going to go ahead and pull that off. I already kind of cheated on that. There's this bolt right there, and then there's one right there. All right, so I believe this is going to make it a little bit easier. What we have is we have two screws under this tray. It's a bit difficult to get under there. I'm going to go ahead and remove the air box because it's only one screw on this side after we remove this screw here. And then we're just going to take this clamp off, unplug this mass airflow sensor. And this should give us a lot of room to possibly stick a socket wrench under the tray from this side and give us a little bit more room. So let's just go ahead and unplug the connector here. 
push the tab, just pull it out. I'm gonna take the little, push the little wings in here. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew the clamp here. Alright. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use a 10 millimeter on this bolt right here. Yep. Should put the 10 mil. Go ahead and lift up on the box. It's going to be connected down here, so you got to kind of wiggle it out, and you just twist it a little bit while you're pulling it out here on the piping. All right, now that the box is out of the way, we have a 12 millimeter right here that we're going to go ahead and try to remove, but not all the way. We use a 12 millimeter wrench. I'm going to loosen that up just a little bit. All right. Let's see if we can get to the other down here. I'm going to do it by feel. Looks like we're going to go from the other side. Alright, so now that we have some clearance, I'm going to go ahead and just slowly turn the wrench. Let's see if we have any wiggle room. Okay, so it's loose enough. Now we're going to go ahead and pull the tray out. Looks like there is one more bolt holding this down, and it's probably the one on the intake pipe here. So, let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Should be a 10 millimeter guy right here. Right there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove that. So now we got the bolt that was right under there, which is this intake pipe. There's a hidden screw that we were trying to find over here that we got out. When you're pulling out the tray, this guy right here, this little bracket for the ECU will get in the way. Kind of just got to wiggle it so it helps get this out. Once that's done, you're able to pull out the tray. Now down here, these were the two bolts that we had trouble getting to because they're pretty difficult to see. Um, when you're getting out from the bottom, there's this ground cable that's in the way that hooks onto this bracket right here. You need to go ahead and put your thumb or finger on there and pull the tab either up or down. You might have to wiggle it and then you can pull it off. Once you do that, then you'll be able to see this screw from the bottom. This one is, you should be able to see it anyways, but taken off the air box made it a lot easier for us to get to it. All right, so before we go ahead and actually take off the oil cooler for the transmission fluid, we need to actually put a drain pan under there because there's going to be oil that's going to come out of there. So we're going to go ahead and set our pan in. All right, you should be able to see the pan from down here. 
Now, this is the cooler. We're going to have 12 millimeters, three of them, one here, one here, and then one down here. Might be a little difficult to see, but I'll try to get my finger on it. Right there. So once we remove those, the cooler is going to move forward. Last bolt. Might need to use an extension. All right, we're gonna go ahead and remove the cooler now. Might have to wiggle it out. All right, it's gonna make a mess. In the meantime, we're gonna use our pick here to go ahead and pull out these old O-rings. You wanna replace these anytime you do the filter. And then we also have the filter in here. This might be a little difficult to pull because of the O-ring. Find a little bit of pressure on it, but just pull from the sides. All right. So we have the filter right here. As you can see, there's an O-ring on there. We're gonna have to go ahead and apply that to the new filter. This is the new filter here. This is the O-ring. I'm going to go ahead and use some of the fluid that came out and put it around this O-ring. It'll help make it easier to put in. All, right. All we have to do is just push it in until it feels like it clicks in. All right, so we're clicked in. Now we're going to go ahead and put the new O-rings here. Just make sure that they go in all the way and don't stick out. In our case, it looks like the O-ring is a little bit bigger than it's supposed to. But it looks like it fits in just right. Okay. I'm going to put the small O-ring here. There's little barbs in there to keep it from coming out. All right. Once we have it in place, we just go ahead and put it and match it up to the holes. And now we'll put the 12 millimeter bolts back in there. And the bottom one right here, just got a feel for it. All right. Once you have them all partially screwed in, we can now go ahead and tighten them down. Now that we have it tightened up, 
let's go ahead and clean up the mess that we made down there. All right, we're going to go ahead and put the tray back in. Um, there's two slits over here where they're going to slide onto the bolts down here that we had to loosen up. Make sure the washers are sticking out a little bit so that when you slide it on there, we get on the right place. So we're going to go ahead and put it in place. Also, you may not see it, but we're going to clip this back under there as well to this bracket. So just make sure to do that. We're going to have to also maneuver it because the bracket over here for the ECU cover is right there. Or the ECU bracket. So put that there. And then you'll know that it's in the right spot when it's flat and the bolt holes over here match up. So I'll go ahead just to get it out of the way and so this doesn't move around. I'm going to go ahead and put by hand at least the two 12s. If it goes in. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and use our other 12 millimeter socket. I'll go ahead and see if I can get it screwed in a little bit by hand. If not. Okay, so the easiest way to get this in there is to have your hand here and have your hand go through this side as well to position the wrench. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it in from this side and then position the wrench onto the bolt. So we went ahead and tightened all the bolts on the bottom. So just again, just to remember, there was two 12 millimeters under here, and then there was one 10 millimeter holding this pipe to the bracket. Now we're going to go ahead and tackle up the top. We're going to put the 10 millimeter here and 10 millimeter there for this positive terminal bracket. Now we're going to do the bracket here for the ECU. Alright, once we got those down, we're going to go to the 12 mils. got that done on to the next which is going to be the air box all right you're gonna have to wiggle this in so we're gonna go ahead and try to get this person first or this piece in first we'll kind of how to figure it out from here so actually I'm just gonna go ahead and insert it here make sure there's a little locator tab that goes into here. Just go ahead and finagle it until it fits into the tab. Alright, now we got to line it up with this one down here. There's also a locator tab right here. There we go. And we just got to tighten this guy down. I'm also going to hook this clip back into there. You'll hear a click. Plug that in. Click. Now we'll use our screwdriver. And you do not need to go super tight on this. Alright. Got that tightened down. Now we're going to go ahead and put the two screws that hold the air box down. We have one right here and one right here. These are both 10 millimeters. Push it there. All 
going to go right here and tighten it. All right. We're going to go to this one. All right. The box is now secure. All we need to do now is put in the battery. So we're going to put the little cover that goes to the bottom. There's little locator holes that will hold it in place. It won't move when it's in the right spot. Now we're going to put the battery back in. Okay, now there's another cover. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put the battery hold down. There's little hooks, and you're going to have to look right here. It'll be hard to do it on this side. Basically, what you need to do is there's a little cutout for it, and there's a little cut, a little hole on this side for this one, and you're just going to slide that in there. Put the screw in. Okay. Somebody screwed this up before. Let's we'll we'll do it so that it holds it in place. Now we put the terminals on. We put the positive first. And then we'll do the negative next. And that's the end of the job. All right, thank you for watching Mobile Car Mechanic. We just completed the job on our 2016 Honda Accord. This job does also apply from 2013 to 2017 Honda Accords. Uh, after you finish, it's probably a good idea to let the car idle for maybe a couple minutes before you go ahead and take it for a drive. Other than that, we're all done. Successful job. If you have any comments or any suggestions, please let us know at the end of the video. Thank you.